Welcome to step one, write a security policy. A security policy should cover the most likely threats to the network and the best ways to minimize them. A risk assessment may be used to determine how likely specific threats are. A risk assessment will often give a dollar amount that it would cost the company should a particular risk be realized, which is multiplied by the number of times that risk is likely to be realized per year. So if a particular risk is estimated to cost $2,000 each time it occurs, and it's likely to occur three times per year, then the cost for that risk is $6,000 on a, on a yearly basis. A different risk might be estimated to cost $5,000 each time it occurs, and it may be likely to occur seven times a year then that risk would cost $35,000 on a yearly basis. So it would make sense to give a higher priority to the second risk and to spend more money and time on it. Now, if a risk has a very small dollar amount and it's not likely to occur very often, then you might decide to simply forget about that risk altogether and not, uh, and, uh, not even bother with it. Now, you need to be aware that a risk assessment can give you a false sense of security uh, because the report, the risk report gives you specific numbers which seem to have validity, but they don't necessarily because those numbers are based on guesses in the first place. So just remember garbage in, garbage out. So when it comes to risk assessments, that's something that you might want to do uh, if you understand the problems with it, but you don't need to necessarily do it depending upon your particular situation. Now, you must make sure uh, to cover any laws and regulations that are applicable to your company. Uh, so, for example, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, most corporations are subject to that. Uh, you might be subject to HIPAA uh, if you are a medical company or the, if you are using credit cards, there are special regulations for that. So you need to make sure that any of those that your company needs to abide by are in, in fact included in the security policy. Now in the security policy, you definitely want to include clearly defined roles and responsibilities. So who is it that's in charge of keeping the firewall updated? Who's in charge of, back, of backup? That sort of thing. Next, you want to make sure that you involve management in the creation of the policy. And also make sure that management signs off on the policy. Now, the reason why you want to do this is so that your policy has teeth. Meaning that supposing a security analyst in the IT department writes this policy and puts it out, Users might simply ignore it, but if the president of your company tells people that they must follow this, then it's likely that they will. You want to make sure that your security policy is a high-level document and understandable by all employees. It should be broad as opposed to technology-specific. Writing the policy in this manner has the benefit that the security policy should rarely require updating. Now, based on the security policy, technology-specific procedures can be written. So it's assumed that as time goes on, procedures will need to be rewritten, but the security policy should not. Now, an example of a specific procedure would be what should the person in charge of backup specifically be doing daily to make sure that the backup is done properly. And lastly, you want to make sure to include an acceptable use policy, that's AUP, in the security policy. Now, an acceptable use policy is very specific, indicating to end users exactly what they are allowed to do on the network and what they're not allowed to do. Uh, for example, they might be allowed to use um, internet 
for personal purposes, or maybe they're not allowed to. Likewise with email, are they allowed to use email for personal purposes or not? Or maybe they can use, maybe they're allowed to only use it uh, outside of their shift, that kind of thing. Now, usually new employees will be required to sign the acceptable use policy uh, you know, at the time that they're being hired to indicate that they understand it and will abide by it. Now, that's the end of step one. We will see you soon in step two.